Hello, I'm Ed Gill, and I'm program lead of a BA illustration here at University of East London. Today, I'm going to show you my foundation portfolio from Chelsea College of Art and Design back in 1992. Uh, so I used this to get into my BA at Camberwell uh, in September 1993. Obviously, that's quite a long time ago, so some things have changed since then, but the overall ethos of what to show and share remains the same. Okay, so back then we were all advised to make an A1 portfolio with work mounted on gray, black, and white card. Not suggesting that you have to do it this way today, but there's a nice aesthetic to that and it shows the work off well. So I'm just gonna tidy away these sketchbooks and open up and see what we got. Okay, so let's have a look. Okay, this is a painting I did actually just before my foundation. Okay, so it's still in the portfolio. This was an early piece. Uh, this was a self-portrait that I did in collage. Uh, it's inspired by David Hockney for that, although mine pales into insignificance next to his. I was quite into painting at the end of my A-levels. This was uh, influenced by Jean Dubuffet and uh, the Cobra movement. I was getting into, you know, just experimenting with ink, brush and ink, and colors, washes of color. Uh, these are some early foundation drawings. We had to construct a wooden sort of 3D object and then make drawings of it. And in the first week of foundation, we hung up a string and metal objects were hung from that string that were moving. And then we had to draw these objects whilst they were moving. Okay, so I've used a sort of simple technique of layering up the different drawings there. And there's a bigger one from the same session. Okay, so this was the beginning of rotations on foundation where you do a little bit of each subject. So this sheet was just fashion and textiles, playing around with forms and different surfaces. Uh, this was a fine art rotation week. So we were making sort of sculptures, 3D objects, paintings on canvas, and little sort of installation type things. Color prints there. Okay, so these are some images from the fine art rotation where I was making little sculptures and 3D things in the wood workshop, just color prints of the work. These are some really sort of basic lino prints. I, I did mostly at home actually during the foundation. So just in my bedroom, cutting out small bits of lino and printing them on my bedroom floor. This is a selection of prints from the print room at Chelsea. So these are um, mono prints, uh, life drawing mono prints. So a simple technique, metal sheet, black ink, and you draw into it. And then you drop different solutions onto it and uh, get different effects. Again, this is a little sheet of um, small prints I made on my own, little characters and self-portraits. So I was very much just into sort of, you know, building up the sort of visual portfolio, trying different things. Again, some more mono prints. This time in color. They're pretty poor quality actually, but uh, you know, you can see I was trying different techniques. And this is a printing technique using a substance called Cerakol from the print room where you can transfer photocopies and, and rub on the back with this sort of uh, solution. Okay, so this is the graphic design rotation. So I chose to specialize in graphics. Uh, so some of the first things we were doing were playing around with typography. So here I've got stuff, words done in the dark room and with a fax machine and with a photocopier, some that are cut up and collaged, playing around with type. And here, working with uh, type and image together, the Marrow Report was a little, a small magazine I made. Again, I was using, uh, that's acetate from the darkroom, lith, lith film. These are some prints, again, made in the darkroom. This was a stencil, uh, a sort of physical stencil that I cut out and then took into the darkroom and made uh, prints from that, using the sort of positive and negative but again, playing with sort of graphic shapes and symbols. Okay, this was a poster for a film called The Cement Garden, which we all went to see by Andrew Birkin. Uh, and we had to make, it was a competition that we had to enter to do the poster for it. 
my work actually got stolen uh, and I had to remake the poster very quickly. Uh, I think I ended up winning the competition actually with this uh, <laughs> rather rambunctious uh, graphic poster. Okay, these are some exercise in sort of graphic layouts, working with type and image. These are my images printed in the darkroom, just collage with type. So just sort of pushing around layout ideas. Again, these are sort of experimental graphic collages, working with imagery and image making, photos, collages, ink, brush, a little bit of typography. Uh, I was quite into making little books and zines, so on this sheet we've got, um, this was a little zine that I made full of drawings and photos. Uh, and they all slot into this sheet, is another one. So I had to sort of devise a way to show the little magazines within the A1 portfolio, so I sort of devised these um, sort of flaps that the, the magazines hang on, so you can sort of... Uh, Again, pure sort of graphic uh, exercises here, working with words, devious, gamble, and 12, trying to express the word with using the letter forms and a little bit of illustration. This is more like a sort of illustration section, but it's uh, some drawings. This is the bathroom, self-portrait in the bathroom mirror. And little just sort of sketchbook pages and uh, graphic doodles. Uh, I can't remember what this project was for, but this drawing folds out. A hundred years of Brian Kant, who was a children's TV entertainer. Uh, this was a graphics illustration project on time. So it was all about all these drawings that to do with time. And I was sort of drawing athletes and uh, I, was, I was very influenced by the artist Jean-Michel Basquiat, <laughs> as you can probably see. And uh, so these were just a series of illustrations exploring time and athletes winning medals and things like that. Quite playful, quite graphic, very colourful, just sort of playing around with crude illustration, really. Again, a few more pieces. These are on cardboard, uh, so a different medium. You can see I've taken care to sort of, some sheets are on black, some sheets are on gray, and I've been careful with how I've sort of spaced the work. And I remember, you know, measuring gaps and making sure everything was uh, equally balanced. These are ideas worksheets, which was part of the graphics rotation. So, you know, really sort of brainstorming ideas, and they're a little bit superficial. I, I don't know if these were all genuine ideas or if I was trying to make a good looking sheet. But, uh, you know, idea generation was definitely something I learned on foundation. Again, more illustrations. This was a trip to the zoo, and it poured with rain, as it always does when you go to the zoo. So these drawings got soaking wet, and that sort of added to the looseness of the drawing, which I quite like. I always like these crude drawings. And again, I, I sort of devised this way using double-sided tape, you know, how to show 20 drawings on one sheet just by layering them up like that. Uh, these were some drawings done in the British Museum. Uh, so this was in the sort, you know, sort of uh, tribal masks. So just uh, paint and black ink, which I used to enjoy drawing with. Again, more drawings from the British Museum. These would have been at the beginning of the foundation, actually, more than, rather than the end. And uh, brush and ink, pen and ink. This is on newsprint, which is faded nicely. And these are more sort of experimental paintings from the, uh, from the fine arts section. Uh, here's photography. This is a big sort of David Hockney style joiner. My friend Jerry smoking a cigarette on the street. So I photographed him and, and laid that out with some of his drawings and a bit of text. Uh, we spent a week in Soho taking photos and then printing them. Everyone was given a Pentax camera and then we printed them in the black and white darkroom. I was quite into these sort of black borders framing the prints. 
So a few sort of snaps of Soho life. So a big uh, joiner photograph with some houses in Brighton, Sussex. And again, just a portrait of my friend Nick and a, and a church in Brighton. Okay, another essential element for a foundation student or for when you apply for a BA is to have sketchbooks. Sketchbooks are absolutely key to the young creative because they allow you to you know, capture everything you're thinking about, do drawings and collages every single day, develop a visual style, write down notes from lectures and things your friends say. And it's really just a fun uh, you know, way to sort of get into art and design. Capturing your thoughts, doing drawings, using it when you get frustrated, um, you know, training your hand and eye, and uh, you know, just becoming a visual person uh, and enjoying you know, making images, drawings, collages, whatever you're into. So I definitely recommend that you keep constant sketchbooks. And you try and fill them up as much as you can um, and so it just helps to sort of develop your visual language. I think I've uh, got about 174 or something, and they're all complete, and they're all dated, so I never don't finish a sketchbook. They all go to the last page, and I always date them at the beginning, so that one's from 1998. This was a foundation sketchbook at Chelsea, which I went through backwards, so 1992 this would have been. And little fun drawings, paintings, watercolours. Just, you know, so that really takes me back to being on foundation when I look at that sketchbook. Yeah, so I think definitely keep sketchbooks if you're going to be a visual practitioner. And uh, that's where you sort of find yourself. The constant experimentation, exploration, and gathering of images and ideas. Okay, so the main thing to think about when you're putting together a portfolio for BA entry is to show us an overview of everything you've been doing and to present it in like a really nice and beautiful, clean, clear way. That's really what we want, is to see what you've been up to and that you're a visual person who's passionate and enjoys making their work. Hopefully my portfolio from my Chelsea Foundation course demonstrated something like that. It showed a roster of different things, drawings, photography, print, fine art, graphics, illustration, fashion and textiles. And so that's what I had been up to on my BA. So whatever course you're on, whether it's BTEC or if you're still doing A-levels or if you're, even if you're on a foundation, just show us what you've done, but try not to edit it too much. Just art direct it so each section is clear and beautiful and shows us that you're like a committed young creative that wants to go on to do you know, a three-year BA course. So you've seen a selection of my work from my Chelsea Foundation course back in 1992. That was 28 years ago. So things have moved on since then. Uh, and this format of A1 card and everything big and heavy is outdated. So you know, if you're working digitally and you're going to submit a PDF, that's absolutely great. But the same sort of lessons and ethos applies. You know, lay things out carefully measure distances between work, think about the background, is it gray, is it white, is it cream, is it a color? Uh, and you just present your work as beautifully as possible. Keep it clean, keep it clear, uh, and we really look forward to checking it out.